everything will come to you at the right time. You don't have to push, you don't have to stress, you don't have to feel pressure. Everything will come to you at the right time. The answers to your questions will come to you at the right time. God has a timing for everything. The solutions to your challenges will come to you at the right time. The right people will come to you at the right time. What God has promised you will come to you at the right time. It may not come as you thought it would come. At the time you thought, it may not look as you thought it would look like. It may not be as you expected. It may not come from where you thought it would come from. But everything will come to you at the right time. God has his own timing. God has his own way of doing things that is different to our timing. That is different from our way of doing things. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 9. And God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So God has his own way of doing things. It's not our ways. Sometimes we think, well, this blessing or this change or this thing that I'm expecting should look like this. But God brings it in a different way, in a different form that looks like this. You think it should come from this person. But God blesses you through a different person. And so on and so forth. So God's ways are, are, God's ways are different to our ways. So this is why we have to trust God with all our hearts. Because his ways are different to ours. And if we think... Let's say it's a blessing, for example, but it could be anything. If we think the blessing should come from here, but God's bringing it from over here, then as we're focused on here, expecting it from this way, we're completely missing what God is doing over here. Right? So we have to trust God in all of our ways. And we have to not just trust his ways. We have to trust his timing. It's his ways, not our ways. It's his timing and not our timing. The Bible says <clears throat> in Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So there's a few things we need to look at in this first. First of all, trust in the Lord with all your heart. In other words, leave nothing in your heart that has to do with doubt, uncertainty. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In other words, with all your heart. So I trust God even when the odds seem against me. I trust God even when I'm in the middle of the storm. I trust God even when my back is up against the wall. Because it could be in those odds, it could be in that storm, it could be when your back is against the wall, where God is about to make the impossible possible. When the enemies were chasing Moses and the Hebrews, and God was leading them toward the Red Sea, they had the enemies behind them. They had a dead end in front of them, the Red Sea, they couldn't cross. It looked like an impossible mission. But in that impossible is where God created a path where there was no path. In that impossible is where God made the possible. Right? If you were to ask Moses, maybe he could have said, you know, this is a dead end. This looks like suicide. This is the odds being against me. This is my back being against the wall. And if you were to ask Moses, Moses, what does victory look like to you? 
maybe he would have said you know an open land where we can run free and so on and so forth but that wasn't the case there was a dead end in front of them there was a red sea in front of them they were blocked the road was closed but that's where the miracle was and this is why we should never go by our own understanding because if moses went by his own understanding he would have said oh dead end red sea blocked the path is blocked no way out it's an impossible mission and this is why we don't go by our own understanding and after all god did say my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts so god sees something in your current situation which you might not currently be seeing god sees what's ahead and you can't currently see that. You see what's right here in front of you. And as I said, Moses could have done the same thing. And so this is why it's important. First of all, we trust Lord with all our hearts and we do not lean on our own understanding. I mean, imagine if Moses leaned on his understanding. Behind him were the enemies. In front of him was a dead end. Imagine if Moses leaned on his own, own understanding. He might have start, started to disobey God. God says approach the Red Sea. And Moses, if he was to lean on his own understanding, he could have said, no, 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 no. That's a crazy idea. That's a crazy plan. Look, the enemies are back there. The dead end is, is, is ahead of me. I'm not approaching that dead end. This is suicide. I'm not approaching that dead, dead end. I will start running to the left or to the right where there's an open land to try to get away from the enemies. I mean... In the mind of Moses, it could be quite logical. Somebody's chasing you and in front of you is a brick wall. The human mind would say, we don't approach that brick wall. It's a dead end. The human mind will say, run to the left, run to the right, where it's an open road and you can escape, get free. But God continued to tell Moses, approach that Red Sea, approach that Red Sea. And so God might be telling you to approach a certain situation, a certain something in your life. And it looks like it looks like the odds are against you. It looks like it's a brick wall, a dead end. It looks like your back is against the wall. So the Bible is telling you here, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. If it's God telling you to be there. Don't lean on your own understanding, regardless of how the situation looks. And this is why the Bible tells us, walk by faith and not by sight. Because if you're walking by sight, your sight will tell you, oh, that's a dead end. That's a brick wall. That's an impossible mission. The Bible is telling you, walk by faith. So even if the Red Sea of your life is there, the Bible is telling you, walk by faith. Why? Because God will create a path where there is no path right and then he continues to say in all of your ways submit to him so in that situation which you are currently in submit to god in all of your ways mentally emotionally physically spiritually financially relationship wise career wise job wise in all of your ways submit to him submit to god with your thoughts submit to god with your emotions submit to god with how you speak submit to god If God says this is how it is, then this is how it is. Doctors maybe have given you a, a bad diagnosis. Submit to God even with your words. I reject this diagnosis. By his stripes, I have been healed. And so on and so forth. And start speaking life. Start thinking life. Start feeling life. Start speaking life over your life. Okay? And then it continues to say, and God will make your path straight. Just as he did Moses. He created a path where there was no path and he made Moses' path straight. And it's the same with us. Whatever the Red Sea of your life is, submit to God with everything. Submit to God regarding when it will happen, how it will happen, why it will happen, through whom it will happen how it should look like when it happens submit everything to god 
seriously take a back seat submit everything to god let go of wanting to control let go of being impatient let go of complaining let go of getting angry let go of getting irritated seriously submit that's what submit means it means you're submitting everything everything if you think about it elijah in the old testament elijah submitted to god when he was in the wilderness and god fed him every single day a little raven would come to elijah every single day and feed him bread and meat every day but if elijah was to go by lean on his own understanding he would have said mm, this is a wilderness here there's nothing there's nothing to eat. There's nothing to drink for miles and miles and miles. No, the odds are against me. My back is against the wall. It's an impossible mission. I'm getting out of this wilderness. But he didn't say that, did he? He trusted the Lord with all of his heart and he did not lean on his own understanding. Instead, with all of his ways, he submitted to God and God made his path straight. It's all right. It's all right. No, it's all right. Come on. It's all right. No, it's all right. No. Come on. No. Come on, be a good boy. No. Come on, Facebook. No. Facebook. Be a good boy. No. Facebook. Be a good boy. Yeah, my uh, dog's face is Facebook. My dog's face. My dog's name is Facebook. Um, I've had him for almost uh, 12 years. And it was a, a if, way before my encounter with Jesus. And it was a season in my life where uh, my life was all about Facebook. I mean, I was just spending so many hours a day on Facebook. That's all I did. I just Facebooked from the morning to the night. I was just facebooking from the morning to the night and then someone gave me, gave me this little puppy and i could hold him in the palm of my hand it was so tiny this little puppy and because i was spending so many hours on facebook and that basically that's all i knew that that was my whole life facebook as soon as i saw the puppy the first name that came to mind was facebook and so i named him facebook and now 12 12 years later you know he's just used to the name facebook and that's facebook and I also have a black cat who's named black and I have a red cat who's named red and all three are boys so and they're my children so I don't have biological children and they are my children so with that being said how did we get to there anyway so yeah so Elijah was in the wilderness and he could have said, well, there's no food, there's no water, there's no anything for miles and miles and miles. Look, this is an impossible situation. Let me get out of this wilderness so I can survive. But he went to the wilderness originally because God had commanded him to be in that location, that place at that time. OK, and God is faithful. Even when the task is impossible, God will provide a supernatural way to get you what you need at that time and but we need to be like elijah he trusted god with all of his heart but the same with moses as we spoke of moses trusted lord the god with all of his heart he was being chased by the enemies and the lord said to him approach the red sea you know go this way go this way go this way moses could have said uh uh it's a dead end the enemy is behind me chasing me and that's a dead end i'm not going it's an impossible situation. It can't happen. But Moses didn't say that. Instead, he trusted the Lord with all of, all of his heart and he did not lean on his own understanding. It's the same with the disciples of Jesus Christ. There were situations where they were put in prison, they were beaten, they were mocked, they were everything. But they trusted the Lord with all of their hearts that God has a purpose in that situation. It's all at the right time, at the right place, with the right people to speak the right, right words, all in divine right timing. For what? For God's will to be done. 
for God's will to be done in your life, for God's will to be done in the other person's life, depending on if God is using you as a vessel for other people. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So how is your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? So how is, so in other words, we are supposed to bring heaven on earth. How do we bring heaven on earth? Through vessels, right? Just as the Holy Spirit has vessels to bring his kingdom, to bring heaven on earth, guess what? The enemy has likewise vessels to do his dirty work, right? Works both ways. Right, so, but it's not just the disciples or Moses or Elijah. It was, I mean, great example was Jesus Christ. Jesus was always, always, always surrendered to God the Father. And that's why Jesus was always, always, always performing miracles, right? Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and the, and the Father are one. Jesus was so surrendered to the Father he was in the father the father was him in him to such an extent that jesus and the father were one and jesus is in the example in which we are to walk in so we are to be this one this unity this communion this connection with jesus christ with the father with the holy spirit it's the same thing I and the Father are one, says Jesus Christ. Jesus also said in John chapter 14, verse 10, Do you not believe that I am in the Father? And the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. So Jesus was telling, telling us that him and the Father are one, and when Jesus is speaking, it is not by his own authority. It is the Father speaking through him. And the work Jesus does is not by his own authority. It is the Father doing the work through him. Okay. So we have, but Jesus was constantly surrendered, surrendered, surrendered. He wasn't trying to control. He wasn't trying to do what time, how long and impatient and angry. Dead end. I'm surrendered. Impossible mission, I'm surrendered. The odds are against me, I'm surrendered. Surrender. Jesus was constantly, constantly, constantly surrendered to God the Father. And so the Father was speaking and doing the work through him, even in the impossible, it was the Father's will being done. So no, when you are in the impossible, if you surrender to God the Father, if you surrender, God will speak through you and move through you and he will make your path straight. <clears throat> and it will all come to you at the right time. Everything in divine, divine right timing. So don't push, don't rush, don't get anxious, don't doubt. Don't, 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 don't do these things. Do not fear. Multiple times in the Bible, we are told, do not fear, do not worry, do not be anxious. You know, there's a reason why God is telling you these things. Don't do those things, right? It will happen and all will come at the right time. You just need to surrender to God. God's will, God's timing, God's everything, right? Focus on Jesus. Don't take your focus off Jesus. The second you take your focus off Jesus and put it on the problem, that's when you start to sink. So, Regardless of the adversity around you, keep your focus on Jesus, surrender to God, and everything will come at the right time. God's time, not yours. So with that being said, there's lots more information found in my books, which I have published. Who is God? New Age Occult to Jesus Christ. Worldly Life of Deception. And I'm currently writing the next book titled Spiritual Warfare. It's a must. You must get that book. You must get all of them, basically. Um, that should be out at, at the end of the month, hopefully. So with that being said, God bless you. Peace be with you.